Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for this tutorial, we're going to be doing some like a really quick box braids tutorial, triangle parts. Um, as you can see, I've already done the first roll, so I'm going to move on to the second roll. I'm going to show you guys how I pretty much part these and do the installs and all that good stuff. Um, there is a pattern that I use when I'm working on triangle braids. As you can see, if I'm doing large braids, I like to do two rolls behind the ears. And then after that, I proceed on from tempo to tempo. But if I'm working with, you know, medium, medium, which is what this is, <laughs> like small and a large, and I mean, small and a medium. <laughs> Yeah. What am I saying? Um, but yeah, it's not really like a large, it's kind of like in between. But I like to do the two rows behind the ears and then I move forward towards the temple to temple. So right now I'm just making sure that the lines are sh as straight as I can get it. Um, with triangle braids or any of these fancy parts that you see, it's very important that you take your time when it comes to parting because you're never just going to get it at the first try. It does help to have a really good parting utensil. Like I like to use um, combs that have really really thin ends. As you can see this is the metal one. I think this is the tiniest I could find. So this really helps with precision. Um, but you typically have to go over your parts multiple times just to make sure that it's accurate and it looks good and it looks straight. Okay, so you're not always going to have it right, you know, at the very start. So for these, I like to do diagonal parts to create that V, which is going to create the illusion of the triangle. So you're just going to take your time, use your clip, secure the hair out of the way, um, before you can say, you know, before you can begin braiding or say you're ready to begin braiding um, as you can see I'm gonna create the other diagonal uh, line to create the illusion of the what do you call it the triangle so for the ends I like to start off doing my diagonal line from the like I like to have the ends create its own V if that makes sense so for the very first one I'm not gonna be doing two diagonal lines of course that first line is going to automatically create that V at the end whereas the second one I'm just going to do another diagonal part in the opposite direction to create a downward facing V which is a triangle <laughs> and yeah so you're going to continue like that just creating diagonal lines to create V's the V's are essentially your triangles so if it doesn't look like a V it's not going to look like a triangle just kind of keep that in mind so you may have to go back and alter your parts a little bit but um yeah, just it's one of those things where you just just play with it, have fun, take take your time, don't rush, um, don't don't stress yourself out about it too much. No one ever just gets it right at the first time, so you have to practice. So when I'm placing the hair, I like to work in three strands and then I distribute her natural hair into the three strands to match the strands of the braiding hair and then I begin to crisscross. I do about two or three, no I do three crisscross before I flip my hands over to start braiding regularly. Those two, three, those three crisscross that I do are just to secure the hair onto the braids before I can actually start braiding the, you know, the ends. Um, so yeah. Pretty much just flipping your hands afterwards, it does make a difference to kind of make the braids flow and so I'm not kind of braiding awkwardly. Um, but yeah, I always use, utilize product to help with flyaways. Um, like I always use, um, like I always mentioned, I use my Shining Jam to help me with any stray hairs that may be hanging loose. So yeah, just use your product and just take your time.
So for my next roll, I like to do the tempo to tempo after I've done the two bottom rolls. Um, so yeah, just do the tempo to tempo. Like I said, take your time. Um, I like to do just a straight part first and then I will typically go back afterwards to make sure that it's straight just to just kind of have an outline and idea of where I'm parting and then I go back and clean it up. It saves me a lot of time um, so that way I can really see what's going on. Um, but yeah, as, as you can see, I'm going back again just to make sure that the parts are nice and clean. Like I, like I told you guys earlier, use... Um, a, a comb that'll help you with the most precise parting. If the ends of your comb are too thick, it'll be very hard for you to get that sharp and crisp, crisp line. <laughs> so yeah, using a rat tail comb with the ends that are very nice and thin does help you with parting. And also using products, if you want to use some shining jam, you can apply it to where you want to part and then it, it'll enable you to be able to see your parts clearly. That's another really good tip, um, so you could try that if that helps. But yeah, if you're using the rat tail comb with the ends that are too thick, you're not going to be able to see exactly what you're doing and you're not going to be able to get the most accurate parting.
I'm just going to be doing another layer of the parts at the top, just a little bit above the temple to temple. Um, this is just going to be like from the arch of her eyebrows to the other side, the arch of her eyebrows or the ends of her eyebrows. Um, I guess that's a way to help you measure it. Um, like I said, take your time and just make sure that you're doing a good job. Make sure you're getting the most precise parts because with triangle parting, that's where the beauty of the hairstyle is, is, you know. So just make sure that you're doing the best that you can to make sure that the triangles actually look like triangles and the parts actually look like parts and there are no hair in between where you're parting. So typically the size of the person's hair you're doing is going to determine how much parting that you're going to do at the crown section. So for her, we can get at least three rolls at the at the crown. For some people, only two. For some people, you can get four. So it just really depends on how full the person's hair is and also the size of their hair because everyone's head is shaped differently. So keep that in mind. So just do what looks right. Look, do what looks proportional. And just kind of use your discretion to go, you know, use the other roles that you've parted. Use that as a guide as you go along with it. You know, it'll help you. 
So for her now, I'm gonna do three rolls at the top. Um, but yeah. done just take a pair of scissors and just cut off any stray hairs that may be hanging loose um, and you can always use the steam method that I showed you guys before just take some loose apply it onto the hair and then dab your towel into hot water make sure you drip off any excess hot water that could be dripping from the towel and then just take that towel and run it through the hair and let it sit for two seconds and then you run it down um, that'll allow you to be able to lay up, lay down the flyaway hair so that way it's not sticking up uh, in case you weren't able to get them with your scissors that's a really good way to kind of tame it as well so just a little FYI to kind of help you guys out um, I hope you try it I hope it works for you if you do try it let me know how it went uh, if you like it better or you know let me know <laughs> So now that you're done, you want to go ahead and accessorize. Um, just using the gold clips that uh, my client brought with her. From, I think she got it from a local beauty supply store. Just applying that onto the hair. You can apply some strings as well. Just whatever suits your personality. Go ahead and do that. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like it. Make sure you share it. Give a comment. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a merry day and God bless.